In today's lesson, we're going to look at position-specific matrices, hidden Markov models, and COGS. Position-specific matrices are used by programs like SciBlast and the Conserved Domain Search at NCBI. They're a really simple way of scoring an unknown protein to see if it fits within your alignment. We start with a training set where we've built an alignment of proteins. And at each position, we score how likely we are to have each amino acid. So for example, at position 1, there's a 3 fifths chance that we'll have a D in this alignment. And there's a 2 fifths chance we'll have an E. At position 3, there's a 4 fifths chance four of our, of our amino acids are serines. And there's a one-fifth chance there's a threonine. So we can just go through the whole alignment and score what amino acids occur at which position. Once we've built that data set, it's easy to then take an unknown query sequence and count how often each amino acid occurs in our training set. We sum up those scores and we get an overall likelihood that our unknown protein belongs to the alignment that we've scored. So for example, our protein here, DET gap IDV, looks like it would belong quite well with the rest of our training set. The amino acids are in a similar abundance at each position as they are in the training set alignment. And this might get a high score. This might suggest that this protein has that domain that's represented by the sequence alignment. In contrast, another protein like WDKLRIE which has the same amino acids, but in a different order, does not get a high score. Now let's have a look at hidden Markov models. The hidden Markov models are basically looking at the probabilities of amino acids as well. The idea is that given the amino acid that you're at, what's the probability that you'll get to the next amino acid. Don't forget that in alignments we can have insertions and deletions as well. The probability of changing from one amino acid to the other is called the transition probability. The probability of an insertion or a deletion is called an emission probability. And so we can think about a hidden Markov model as a series of columns where we start at the beginning and we either follow through our emission probability and have a deletion or we follow through our transition probability and transition from the amino acid we're at to the next amino acid in the chain. Don't forget that we can have multiple deletions that occur simultaneously and so with some probability we'll keep looping around the deletions. And then we transition from our second column into our third column, either from our deletion back to an amino acid, or from a known amino acid to the next amino acid with that transition probability. The way that we build it is very similar. We start with our training set that we've aligned, and we calculate the probability of one amino acid following another. So in this case, if we start with an aspartate, with a D, there's a two-thirds probability of having a lysine next. There's only a one-third probability of having an arginine following a D. Similarly, if there's an E, there's a 50% chance we'll have a K next. 
there's also a 50% chance that we'll have an E next. And so we can repeat this process looking at all of the amino acids in our alignment and figuring out the probability that subsequent to this amino acid there's either a gap or there's another amino acid. We can use that same approach now that we've got our transition probabilities calculated to just score an unknown protein as part of our alignment. We just calculate for each amino acid what's the likelihood of going from that amino acid to the next amino acid or to a gap. And we can just sum up or multiply those probabilities to get our overall score. So for example, for our alignment DET gap IDV, we would start with our D and say what's the probability of going from a D to an E. Oh, we can see in our training set that doesn't occur very often. Going from an E to a T, that doesn't occur very often either. Going from a T to a, a gap never occurs. And going from a gap to an I occurs 50% of the time. Once we have an I, we always go to a D and then we go to a V. So you can see that this sequence may not get such a great score as it got with the position specific matrix that it might get with our hidden Markov model approach. On the other hand, our second sequence WDKLRIE also gets an extremely bad score because the amino acids are just in the wrong order. So where do we get our training sets from? In the example I showed you, we just have one alignment that we can use. In reality, we can build them from protein families, like PFAM, like PIR superfamilies, like fig fams or tiger fams, any of the protein family approaches. One of the protein family approaches that works very well is called clusters of orthologous groups. To generate COGS, you start by identifying all similarities between all pairs of proteins. And then you start identifying triangles of related proteins, so three proteins that are highly similar to each other. In our case, we have three proteins, A, B, and C, that are very similar to each other and form a triangle. If we find that B and C are also similar to D, we would then include D in our cluster of orthologous groups because two of the proteins that D is similar to are similar to A. So even if there's no similarity between A and D, we can include them together. So what I've told you today is that position-specific matrices look at each amino acid in an alignment and use those to build a score for an unknown sequence. Hidden Markov models look at the probability of transitioning from one amino acid in the alignment to the next amino acid in the alignment, also keeping in mind that there may be insertions and deletions occurring during an alignment and that one of the popular ways of building training sets for both PSMs and hidden Markov models is to start with clusters of orthologous groups, proteins that are highly related to each other, and use those to build alignments.